Okay, so you're gonna go to Vex Robot C, and you're gonna double click to open it. And that's the double click. And make sure you only open it once. And you're gonna take a second there to open it. All right, and then once it's open, you can go to File Open. All right, and you can find your program, and it's probably gonna be under My Computer, under your Z Drive. And we should have stated there yesterday or last class in a technology folder. All right. Um, I don't have one. I didn't, I didn't save it to something that I could find not at school. So I'm going to have to go File New. And then, so if you didn't do this, you're going to follow along with me. And I'm going to set up my robot. So I'm going to go to Performance. I'm going to make sure both of these are on. So I have the VEX 2.0 Cortex. And I have Natural Language selected. Okay, I know these both are on because of that check mark right there. All right, and remember that from class, I'm sure. Now we're going to do the motor and sensor setup. Now remember that our VEX test beds, we have a motor that's uh, VEX 269. All right, so we're going to open two of those. And I'm going to call them, I'm going to call one right motor, and then I'm going to call one left motor. All right, I'm going to push apply. I'll go to the analog setup. And. I had two analogs, it was a potentiometer and the line follower, and respectively I'm going to type in there P O D D D R potentiometer and in R2. Alright, I put this in the second one earlier today, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm gonna put Take that one out. Then I'm going to type in and I'll change these again because these are the ways you guys have them set up. So I'm going to go back and set them the same way. L I E F O L O W E R. Notice on both this and my motors, the first word is all lowercase. The second, the first letter of the second word is the only uppercase. And then over here I have uh, bump switch and limit switch. So the first one's limit and then S W I T C H. And the second one is the bump switch. B U M P S W I T C H. All right. And once again, I push apply. Okay. And we'll know we did it right because it'll look like this. Okay. And it's very important that you have these. Um, you have these named correctly because if I, for say, have the first letter of potentiometer capitalized, and I called on it, it would come up wrong. Okay. And notice it's open loops. That's cool too. Okay. So there's that loop thing back in there. Now, to type pseudocode in, in multiple lines, it's uh, forward slash, forward slash, and then a star, which, so you just so you know, it's on the eight key, all right, and then you can type anything you want, and you can type it in multiple lines now, too, all right. Well, you should be able to. All right, and you can type in "art is no fun." All right, but you could also just type in the forward slash forward slash. So that's what I want to do. Okay, many people have you write the whole pseudocode right here. I don't like doing that. What I like to do is I like the forward slash forward slash and then type out. Turn left motor on. Okay, and as I'm doing this, a good suggestion whenever you're following something off of a YouTube video is to stop and pause the video, catch up, and then go on to the next thing. So as I type and I, I get too far ahead of you, just make sure you pause the video and then move on to the next thing. So turn right motor on. And then we had wait. Or wait five seconds, or what do we say, ten seconds? And then we're going to stop left motor, and then we're going to stop right motor. Okay, and so that's a basic pseudocode for the first problem. Okay, so that's gonna be the problem one. So we can just file save that. I'm going to file save as you see, follow me, and I'm going to save it to my 
Automation Robotics, day two, and I'm gonna cut out the dust bed. And I'm gonna call it, um, so I'm gonna underscore it, I'm gonna call it um, on 10. All right, that's real creative so that I know the motor's staying on. All right, now, the next thing. So when you get natural language here, you'll see these until, wait. So you can put in here, you can just drag them in. So notice I have to wait, right? I have to wait time. And I'm gonna wait time, I'm gonna put 10 here. So it's, this is measured in seconds for natural language. So I can do wait time, 10. Can okay, I like that pseudocode on the same thing? Um, same line. So I can put on a, a movement, and I can put start motor, and I can type in. Now, here's something pretty interesting. Um, our motors, they run a 200, or 127, um, that is full speed for them. So, Let's just say I'm going to run these motors about half speed. So instead of putting the motor port now, the cool thing I can do is I can even come up here. I can do, I'm just going to type it in actually. Right, and I'm going to type motor. And then I'm going to push here, and I'm going to push this 64. We'll do 64 as their speed. All right, and I'm going to turn. We'll just cop, cut this out, and I'm going to paste it right in the back of here. All right, and then I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to do the same thing, and oops, Control Z to redo that. All right, and I'm going to take that in the back of that, and this is going to be the left motor. And I'll do this one at 64. Wait, and then I have to have a stop motor. So the same thing right here. All right, and it might get kind of boring at times to, to write code because you have to be very particular about where you're putting all your commands. So I can, but the nice thing about Robot C is you can just drag and drop from that right column here. And uh, those of you who you who have more experience with programming, you'll be able to just type in the, the names and everything. You could just start typing right in. All right, but I find it very easy for beginners to go and. Um, drag and drop all right so after that's complete all right we're gonna go and we're gonna start to all right so once you're finished writing your code you can go back up to the top here and one thing that I just want to make sure that we do here is I, I had this thing I'd like to have everything over and make it all on the same line all right and I don't like to have these gaps here remember this is a simple behavior right it's not a complex behavior that would be pretty much the whole task main and it's not a basic behavior basic behavior once again it's just gonna be one line turn motor on okay so we have a function what what it's functioning and how it's functioning if that's a basic mate behavior simple behavior it's like a paragraph and then the whole essay or the whole task main that's gonna be your complex behavior okay um, once again our task main our main program only has one simple behavior in it, okay? So you're gonna come up here, you know, compile program, okay? And it's gonna check to make sure you wanna save it as that. And at that time, you're gonna save it as that, all right? And yes, you do wanna replace it, all right? And you'll notice nothing happened, okay? Nothing happened, actually, all that really did was it just saved your work, however, let me show you what's going to say here. So what if I made a mistake and I typed in left motor like that and I go robot and I do compile program, a little X comes up and it's a warning. Left motor is a similar variable to this and it shows you what I wrote right there and what it should, what it's expecting or what it's going to think it's going to be. All right, so I don't like any X's, but the program secretly still works with the uh, yellow X's. So you just go robot, you compile program again, and it's gone. Okay, now if I put, if I did tart motor, and I compile program, now that's a little bit worse. Okay, that's a red X, and tart motor is not a. Um, is not a variable. Now I should have picked that up because it didn't turn blue. 
I go back in, I compile program again, and if with ever with a red X, it will not actually run your program. All right, so you just save this, okay? That's one basic, or simple, correct me, behavior that you just programmed. You have the pseudocode to go with it, so that when you get a red or yellow X, and we go back to troubleshooting, remember troubleshooting being systematically walking through a program to figure out possible solutions. We'll be able to do that very efficiently with this coding right here, okay? And it helps to have everything on the same line, all right? Um, so that's the first step. So that's all we're going to do for right now. Please take a minute and finish writing this code. Compile it one more time so it's all saved. Make sure it's in your Z drive, okay? That's your first task of this lab. All right, and then I'm going to have you check that off in the sheet that you're following along with, okay? Now make sure you've written down something that you've either learned or that you completed this step in your daily book right there so I can make sure you did some work today, okay? So that's the second check I'm going to have in case something doesn't work out in the failures. So.